Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Aloha. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me today on my weekly podcast. My name is Paul Fletcher, and this is The Healing Source. And today, I will be completing the series of five. And this series is on the walk, excuse me, is on the five elements of traditional Chinese medicine. And then next week, I'll move into a whole new series. I have yet to decide what that's going to be. But most likely, it will be uh, the 10 Da, which are the 10 qualities that every human being, uh, if incorporated, if those qualities were incorporated into your life uh, on a moment-to-moment, hour-to-hour, and day-to-day basis, then not only you, but the loved ones around you and humanity would be significantly benefited. These 10 qualities, uh, I won't go into details in today, but they carry profound um, abilities to help bring great transformation to our life. So you can expect that as a very possible next series. But today we're going to be focusing on completing the wisdom on the five elements of traditional Chinese medicine. Now, a disclaimer, as I have made in the other podcasts, I am not a TCM doctor. I have no professional uh, education in this arena. What I am sharing has been shared with me through one who, uh, through an individual, my teacher, doctor, and master Sha, who is a trained, certified TCM medical doctor, and the information that he has shared is in his books. So everything I'm sharing with you is directly in the books that he has written, and I'm just relaying that using my personal experience. And the purpose of sharing this is so that you as an individual on the receiving side or as someone who wants to bring healing to others can make a difference. When you understand the nature of the five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and today is water, then you can have a far greater um, comprehension of the interconnectivity of the body. So the previous four elements, wood, fire, earth, and metal were covered. If you missed those, make sure you subscribe to my podcast and go back and watch those videos or listen to those podcasts. Okay, they will serve you very well. Today is about the water element. And in my personal experience, I found it to be one of the most important elements. The water element is very important for the human, specifically because we are literally made up between 70 and 90% water, depending on your age. When you're born as an infant, it's up to 90% of you are water. And then as we become older and drier and more brittle, we have less and less water in our systems and our ability of our cells to absorb water and work with it to assist us um, becomes less and less over time, unfortunately. Uh, So that's one main reason why this is such a potent and important subject matter. And one interesting aspect of the water element is that it is opposite of fire. And, uh, you know, my teacher, he says quite seriously, but at the same time, jokingly, that you die when your heart stops. It's not when you have, you know, a coma or a stroke or, or, or a car accident or, or, you know, traumatic brain injury. And, you know, it, the, the cause of death is when the heart stops. The heart is the fire element. And so there are quite a few people out there that, that, you know, they're very, very healthy, and then one day their heart just has finished. He explains in a generalized sense that the water element is very important for balancing the fire element. And I'm going to share with you today the, uh, the, ma- the main qualities that he shares in his books <clears throat> on the water element. And I will also remind you that you know, if you if you actually did any deeper research, you would find that there's at least 18 qualities for each of these elements. You know, they 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 go into the the direction, the season, the the, the senses, 
Um, there's a sense of taste associated with each one. There's a very long list of all the qualities associated with each element. I only cover the, the main five in, um, in this wisdom here, because it is the main five that will assist us with knowing if we have any blockages or issues with our water element. So I'm gonna first start by sharing an image. And let me locate the image I wish to share here. There we go. And you should see this clearly on your screen. <clears throat> and this represents uh, all of the elements. So real briefly, the, and these are not necessarily in the order that, that I am taught, and I am taught from the wood element on the right hand side to the left. So wood, fire, earth, metal, water is how I am taught. So I'll, I'll go ahead and start in the far right and then go back around. So you have your liver, your heart, your spleen, your lungs, and your kidneys. Kidneys is your water element. That's why I'm showing it as the fifth and final in this series, because this is how I was taught. So the liver, uh, liver is the wood elemental. Wood feeds a fire. Fire breaks things down, feeds Mother Earth. Earth uh, creates the metals, and the metal holds and carries water, like a, as in a water pail. This is part of the nurturing cycle that I spoke about earlier in the previous presentations. When we go to the yang organs, there's always a yin and yang organ for each element. So for the fire element, you have heart and small intestine. For the earth element, you have spleen and stomach. They're paired organs. They work in harmony together to maintain balance. The metal element is the lungs and large intestine. And today, the water element, we have the kidneys and the urinary bladder. So <laughs> kind of makes sense, right? Urinary bladder, that's where our wastewater goes. But the kidneys are actually the water element. And I'm going to share some really interesting information about that in just a moment. And then, of course, you have the wood element, which is your liver and your gallbladder. Now, one important thing, and I have mentioned this before, <clears throat> is that modern science, modern Western medicine approach, does not consider the organs as connected. They would not see that the kidneys and urinary bladder are connected to each other. They would not uh, uh, see that the liver and gallbladder are connected. You would have a liver specialist. You would have a gallbladder specialist. You would have a spleen specialist and a stomach specialist and so forth. But in the TCM approach, uh, everything is connected. Too much fire energy can affect the, the spleen. And insufficient wood energy can negatively or positively affect the heart and so forth. Now, sticking now to the water element and going over some of those attributes, one of the first things we see is the kidneys. And what I want you to, to grasp about this deeper understanding of the water element is when you are born, I just shared with you that we are 90% water. When you are born, you are two cells, become four, become eight, become 16, uh, 32, and so forth, right? And pretty soon you're a fetus. And what are you floating within? An embryonic sac filled with what? Right? Nutrients, fluid. That, that fluid, that embryonic fluid, carries the nutrients from the mother. But you are literally floating in a sack of water. Isn't that interesting? Further, as the scientists have looked at fetuses underneath microscopes to see uh, which organs and what is growing first, what do you think is the first organ that is developed in the fetus? It's not the heart. That would be most people's first guess. It's not the brain, which would be most people's second guess. It is the kidneys, the water element. So your kidneys are actually exceptionally important to your longevity, to your life. Uh, there are many who have kidney dialysis because their kidneys are shutting down. And they are basically given a death sentence. It's just a matter of how much time we can extend your life is the general Western medical approach. Whereas uh, with the Eastern approach, they look at everything much more holistically and the possibility of extending your life and reversing a kidney disease is actually possible with an Eastern medicine approach. Certainly it doesn't always work, but it does have a better track record than the Western medicine approach. So it's worthy to pay attention to the um, to the uniqueness of the kidneys because when you are born, literally that is the first organ created. Now in the open spiritual channels classes that I've taught, 
I add some additional information, which I'm just going to give you just a snippet of here because it's quite interesting. So the, uh, <clears throat> the, in, from the perspective of, of the Tao and the Tao healing and the larger picture, we have prenatal energy and postnatal energy. And prenatal is the life force energy that comes from our ancestors or that which animates us uh, as we uh, come into this incarnation. The postnatal energy is the energy that's already present with us. And the, the energy bodies uh, of, of every soul, and what assists in this case the kidneys, is what is known as the Snow Mountain Kundalini area. I'm not going to go into any of that information here today. <clears throat> However, this uh, Kundalini Snow Mountain area contains prenatal energy. And that means energy from the ancestors. And that energy comes in and starts animating the, the vibration of the energy around that fetus. And it starts feeding and nourishing the kidneys. And what is born from those kidneys as they watch the fetus grow is the spinal cord and then the spinal column. Then it goes up and feeds and, and starts creating the brain stem and then starts creating the brain itself. So when we talk about the water element, it's truly important to grasp that it is the foundational organ, the kidneys and the water element are the foundation of your entire life. So you might want to pay attention to this specific element and the importance of it in the human body. Now, the paired organ is called the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder and the kidneys work in harmony. The kidneys uh, purify any of the imbalanced toxins and, and fluids in, within our body. They work with the lymphatic system and a variety of systems, uh, but they basically purify the waters within our body. And then what is considered waste goes through the urinary bladder. Now I'm going to go off on a tangent here again, completely separate from uh, water element, but just to give you an idea of the uniqueness of the human body. So when this what's called waste comes into the urinary bladder, it is then expelled as we urinate. There is, an, and you can do your own homework on this and research, but there is an entire group, millions of people, millions, who use what's called urine therapy. And they literally will ingest their own urine. And when I first heard of that, I was disgusted. Um, but upon further research, I was surprised to understand the validity of it. And part of the understanding of it is it follows a similar to a homeopathic audiology, which has been around for hundreds of years and create great success in a lot of people's health. It's tamped down in the traditional medicine approach because, well, it's effective and it, and it fights and goes up against the traditional Western approach of pharmacology. So uh, much of it is pushed away from your awareness. However, the ideology is give a smidgen of what a person needs uh, uh, that, that might be exact opposite of what they have going on as far as disease. Give them something that nudges them in the right direction and the body can adjust. That's a very basic understanding of, of homeopathy. And so when people uh, ingest their own urine, that, um, that uh, uh, excess that leaves the body it carries with it a signature of what the body needs and what it has too much of. Isn't that interesting? And so by bringing a little bit of that back into your body, it tells your body, this is what I need you to, to, to remove. This is what I need you to add. So it gives your body an intelligence signal that came from your body. So this is something to be aware of, if nothing else, because there is a value in it. And this is an aspect of the urinary bladder and the kidneys, part of the water element. Okay. So additionally, there are several other qualities. These include, pull up um, that image again. Give me just a moment. So we're in the fourth column, water element, and you see kidneys and urinary bladder. There is the, what's called the sense organ, sense of hearing, ears, and then the tissues, bone. Now, one of the interesting things about this is that the ears or the sense organs are very, very important. In Western medicine, there's no connection whatsoever to this. 
so for example, I mentioned when I spoke about the wood element, they're connected to the eyes. And I mentioned, if, if you go back to listen to my podcast, I mentioned that one of my friends did a 40 day fast. It was a liquid fast. And at the end of that fast, his, his uh, reading glasses were no longer needed. Do the, do the math yourself, right? So these kinds of things are not really validated or understood. We can purify and cleanse our own body. And, and he had an alcoholic issue. His liver had significant issues and he recognized that. So he went to AA and he got himself clean and he cleaned out his body and his, uh, his eyesight completely returned after the cleaning out of his body and his liver. So, you know, do your own homework on these kinds of things. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm wanting you to see that there is connectivity, the organs and the senses. Last week I did the metal element and I explained to you that I could not smell for 10, 15 years, walk through a fish market, could not smell a thing. Okay. And, uh, I start receiving healing from my lungs, which has no association to the nose and the sinuses in Western medicine, but in Eastern traditional Chinese ideologies, there's a direct connection. And as I healed my lungs, my sense of smell immediately returned. It works exceptionally even today. Um, so when we say that the ears are connected to the water element, and it may have association to your kidneys and kidney strength, you might want to pay attention. Okay, so people often talk about tinnitus or ringing in the ears. Now, Master Shah, who is one of the most profound healers on the planet, has said multiple times that this is a tough one. Tinnitus is a tough one. He's offered blessings to people. Some people it helps, some people it doesn't. And he always includes the kidneys and balancing the water element. Personally, I've done quite a bit of reading around this. I, don't, I do not have tinnitus, thank goodness. But whenever I see articles or anything that says they fixed it, they resolved it, uh, one of the things I came across was quite interesting. And basically uh, what it said was this person's understanding was that the tinnitus was in essence inflammation in the brain. And that inflammation in the brain was creating pressure on the, the ear bones. This was the, this is all of the research that indicated that. And then it provided a miracle vitamin that basically had uh, some specific nutrients from, from specific herbs that all had the same end result, which was to remove the inflammation. Okay. And uh, they said they tested on their dad, who was a fireman for years. And it was so bad that even in his own house, his, he couldn't hear his own fire alarm go off. Um, and he, he fed this to his dad and, and voila, it was a miracle. So whether it's true or not, is hard to say. The point is inflammation of our cells. What are our cells made of? Water. Okay. And so our cells can carry a lot of toxicity in them. Hence, if someone does a fast, there's going to be a good value by removing the toxicity. Eyesight could improve, right? Heart health could improve. And if you cleanse your water elements, your kidneys and your urinary bladder by using the various herbs that are out there, and if you reduce your toxic load, that could have a positive effect for you as well. The tinnitus could dissipate. These are all possibilities. Okay. So I want you to have this larger picture for the purpose of when you're talking to somebody, if they tell you they have tinnitus, if they tell you they have constant urinary issues, insufficient uh, flow of water uh, when they go to the bathroom, or um, in the case of uh, uh, women and, and, and animals, the urinary tract infections, men usually don't have that. Um, what are some of the things you want to look at, right? You want to look at, uh, is there, is there um, contributing factors? What can I do to strengthen my kidneys, which might then possibly positively impact my urinary bladder, okay? Just on a side note, uh, the, those that I've talked to, um, both for pets and um, the women that have brought up that they've had UTI infections, I simply suggest colloidal silver. And again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying you do what I say. I'm just telling you what I do. And I tell them to do their own homework, decide if that's what they want to do. Uh, but you might want to consider that, that every time you go to the bathroom, you simply spray a good quality colloidal silver because silver is known as a natural antibiotic. That's why the cowboys kept the silver coin in their mouth, riding around in horses all those years. And curiously, they never got sick. Isn't that interesting? So, there's many things that we can do to bring natural healing to ourselves. Now, bones is also directly associated with the water element, bones, okay, and bone health. And you see 
uh, a significant issue, uh, especially with women in their bone health and bone deterioration over time. And uh, that being a water element function, very, very curious. So, you know, if you were to, if, to be diagnosed with anything related to bone, bone health, weakness, et cetera, it's important to understand that your bones create your bone marrow. Okay. Um, they're, excuse me, they're a, they don't create bone marrow, but they are the, they're encapsulate your bone marrow and your bone marrow creates stem cells. Stem cells are literally your, your, your construction workers for your body, your stem cells. They, they, they are like a chameleon. They can change and, and just fix any cell in your body. And then it has an innate intelligence. They know exactly where you're that you go to fix things. So if your bone strength is off, that means your bone marrow strength is off. So look to the water element to help resolve that. Increase your uh, quality of the water. Get get structured water. Get water that, that has maybe a spray or two of colloidal silver in it. Increase, uh, go do your homework around the appropriate uh, vitamins and minerals that that tend to be needed. If you just add calcium, uh, that's insufficient. You, you're not going to have very good results just adding calcium because you need phosphorus, you need magnesium, you need uh, potassium, you need other uh, constituents around it as a natural side effect to, um, to uh, assist you with your bone growth and bone health. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you of a, of a product that that just because I use it and my wife uses it and I believe in it and you can do your own homework on it I don't care go to miracleofpearl.com but it's a pearl powder which is basically 100% calcium but because it comes from a natural growing uh, life-based entity a pearl that's grown underwater it has all the associated nutrients um, that would cause a calcium to be absorbed into your body properly so again um, <clears throat> when you feed your body the necessary things and you recognize the interconnectivity, if you have bone issues, strengthen your kidneys, okay? Strengthen your kidneys. And don't just take calcium. Look at what is needed around the calcium to make it absorbable. If you need to add water in your body, which all of us do, try to get water that is highly structured. The, the more structured a water is, the more absorbable it is. They call it being more wet. Um, if you don't know what I mean when I say structured water, do your homework on it, research it. There's plenty of it out there, uh, and, and you can buy simple products anywhere, and, and it'll change the, the, the literally, the, um, not the chemical composition of your water, but the way the, the cells connect to each other in the water. And this causes the structure to be much smaller, which causes it to be much more absorbable, which means that when the water can get into your cells, it can release the toxins that are in your cells which takes pressure off the rest of your body, okay? So all of these things are available to you out there. Become more aware of them. Sharing with you again, uh, the last aspect of, that I'll be talking about is the imbalanced emotion of fear. You see it in, again in the fourth column here, water, kidneys, urinary bladder, ears, sense of hearing, bones, and fear. And so the bones, uh, excuse me, fear uh, is predominant in a lot of people these days, right? You have uh, economic fears, you have relationship fears, you have uh, health fears. Um, there's an entire agenda uh, and, and those that live in the world of negativity to promote fear because it keeps you in a place where you will purchase their product or their service or whatever it might be. So our job as individuals that are awake and aware and living in this world and trying to bring positivity and love and light is to do what we can to remove any fear that might be pervading our environment. So if you have weak kidneys, literally it can cause you to have more fear. Isn't that an interesting approach? Who would have thought that? Uh, Master Shah talks about a student that uh, said they had uh, just you know, immovable fear of, of speaking in public, just, they just, it's impossible for them. And he gave them a, a healing for their kidneys and gave them a chance to boost their kidneys. And they, they, in their own words, said they found themselves on stage speaking to a large audience several months later after receiving this blessing, this chanting. And they said, 
it was only after they walked off stage that they realized, oh my God, I would not have been able to do that several months earlier. And they couldn't attribute to what had changed. Turned out, guess what? They had increased their kidney strength. And again, in the Western approach, there's no connection to this. So when you're when you are a healer and you're looking to help a person to heal, ask better questions. They might say they have weak uh, consistency. It's hard for them to get up in the morning. Um, that they have low energy. Okay go deeper maybe that means they have weak kundalini snow mountain area maybe that means that their um, kidneys are weak okay find out what is their water consumption like uh how, what is their brain health like it is well known in the tcm uh, uh, understandings that uh, kidneys and strong kidneys affects your brain health okay so when people have weak brain health there could be an association to weak kidneys if you, if you check in with people that have dialysis issues, their brain health starts to deteriorate, okay? So there's a lot of interconnectivity of this wisdom that you want to look into. Um, fear, uh, you know, it, it, because I am a, a Tao healer and because each and every time I remind you that you can come to me to receive healing, uh, you can look up Tao healing. You'll find there are many practitioners around the world I'm here to serve you on my website, wellspringoflight.com. <clears throat> but if you came to me and you said, Paul, I have fear, I would probably check my spiritual guidance and transmit a healing to you for your kidneys and one for healing the imbalanced motion of fear. I might bring, uh, might suggest another one, for example, for peacefulness, right? Um, and then you work with those light bulbs to transform the negative information that's in your vibration uh, instantly upon receiving them of course they clear a lot of blockages but you have to work with those and they continue to serve you and who knows within a very short period of time you could be significantly better i say could be because we're never allowed to promise anything but historically we've been doing this you know 20 plus years with a relatively high level of success uh, certainly far more than one might get through a typical practitioner so this information today was designed to help you to have a far greater understanding of uh, the water element. And if you're new to this, you just stumbled across this on one of the podcasts, and this was intriguing to you, go back and listen to the previous five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water, uh, and learn more about those. In fact, uh, register for my podcast, come to my website, uh, learn more about Tao healing as a whole, because when you heal things, uh, where they occur at, which is the level of your personal frequency and vibration. Some might call it your aura, your soul, your energy field, whatever you want to call it. That tends to hold every thought, word, and action, positive and negative, that we have ever allowed into our personal vibration. And those remain there impeding and imposing, whether it's positive or negative, it imposes those energies into our life, into our daily uh, creation and manifestation. So if you want to be um, proactive in releasing and removing the, that negativity, then you want to become more familiar with Tao healing. I do have a monthly membership program where every day for all of my uh, all of my clients, I do healing for them literally every day as part of my membership program. And five days a week, they have a half hour session in which they bathe in the frequency and vibration of the healing field. So if that sounds of interest to you, or if you just want some private healing, then make sure you find me. Links are in the information below. I want to extend my gratitude to all those that came here today. They've been chatting. Hello and hi. Welcome, Anna, Sheila, and Tai Chi, and anybody else who's present. I don't see your name. I'm deeply grateful for your presence, your sharing of this. And I look forward to being back here next week, where I will very likely go into the 10 Da qualities, starting with Da I, the greatest love. I will share with you each quality, the nature, power, and significance of why and how you'd want to incorporate it into your life, and how to use those qualities and the Tao calligraphies that Dr. Master Shah has made available to humanity. That when you utilize those qualities and that healing abilities uh, that come through these source instruments called Tao calligraphies, how you can literally remove love blockages from your life, bring more love into your life, open your heart again, heal, and so much more. So make sure you come back next week, and I will initiate that series. Until then, 
everybody have an awesome day. Bye-bye.